to our worship on the second Sunday in Lent 2021 and thanks to Jenny for starting us off last week. It might seem a little bit that we've been in Lent for a whole year now. Lent of course is traditionally a time where we say no to things, where we say no to perhaps the excesses of life but it feels almost as though we've been saying no for a whole year. Perhaps that really was the world's longest Lent. Where we've had to say no to seeing each other and no to travelling to places and no even to worshipping in church. So I thought this year it would be really nice to say yes to some things instead. Yes to praying. We're going to have a prayer day in March. Yes to reading our Bibles. Yes to God's healing in our body, our mind and our spirit. Yes to Sabbath even, even though we might have felt as though we've had a lot of time to ourselves, saying yes to God for that Sabbath time. Yes to worship in new ways and a special yes to God. This week, of course, we've seen the Prime Minister on television talking about the new ways that things will start to ease up, the restrictions that will start to lift over the next few weeks and months, depending on how successful they are. That we're going to have to come to terms to living with this virus and hopefully with all the vaccinations, we'll all feel a lot safer very soon. But it's confusing time and it's a time of anxiety and we acknowledge that. And it's okay to tell God that that's how we feel. So today I want us to say yes to some things and I want us to try and look at each other and our world through God's eyes and just to be honest with him. So as we've come before God in worship now, let's take our eyes off ourselves just for a few minutes and I know that's not always easy and look at God and lift our hearts in worship. So let's just join together in a prayer. Father, we come from a world where nothing is certain and where nothing is easy. We come to you with confidence to offer a little more of our lives to you. We come knowing that you will ask nothing of us that we cannot face, nothing we cannot do, nothing we cannot give, so long as we rely on the presence and power of the risen Christ. Father, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, you will enable us to offer your worship that is centred not on ourselves and our needs, but on you, and on you alone. Amen. So let's start our worship this morning with one of my favourite hymns. The words will appear on the screen as usual, but if you want to follow it in your book, it's number 51. Great is thy faithfulness.
God in a time of prayer now. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Saviour and our Lord. We praise you that our faith is not just a matter of words, nor is it simply a question of being religious or sharing in the rituals of worship. Christ himself is the focal point of all we say, do and believe. We praise you that he is the door, not only into life that is real, but also to life eternal and to heaven itself. We praise you that in Jesus we see your face. In him, we are confronted with your demand for obedience and trust. Through him, we receive all the love and the power at his disposal. Father, in Christ, we see all of your glory compressed into one human life. It is through him that we find our way to you, or rather we are found by you. Lord, almighty in your loving, all-knowing in your grace, overwhelming in your power, we're not afraid in your presence. Gracious, loving Father, we find our greatest joy in praising you, by your grace coming to us in Christ, enable us to begin a song of praise that flows from our hearts and brings you glory everywhere, every day and forever. Amen. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the love and power and mercy that has brought us to this moment of our lives and our lives together. We confess that we've not always wanted the best for each other or for those around us. We confess that we've too often and too easily pleased ourselves and put our own wants and needs before those of others. We confess that we have memories of the past that still hurts us, that we do not always find it easy to cope with what is happening today and that tomorrow's uncertainty sometimes makes us feel afraid. Lord, we ask not only for forgiveness, but for the desire and strength to begin again. And Lord, we know you hear our prayers, that you hear those prayers spoken and unspoken, that you know the concerns on our hearts and our fears, that you do forgive us, as we come before you, sorry for the things we've done and not done. So we know you will help us start again this week and give us strength and peace in our hearts. And Lord God, as we thank you, we say together now, separately in our homes, but together as one body in Christ, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing again now. We're going to sing a hymn number 462 if you're following it in your book. Come with me, come wander, as we think about the world not being an easy place to live, and sometimes things don't always go right, but God is there in the midst of it. Enjoy. Oh, 
morning I thought I'd do things slightly differently. It's been a very long time since I've seen my sister. We speak on the phone all the time but I haven't seen her since August. And likewise it's been a long time since I've seen my daughter but I do see her on FaceTime frequently which is just not the same is it? But when I thought about it I thought well actually you've probably never seen them either. So I've asked them if they would do the readings for me today and luckily they said yes. So here they are. Meet Nicola, my daughter, and my sister Susan. Hi everyone, I'm Nicola. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your service today. It's an absolute pleasure. Today I'm going to be reading Psalm 92. It's so enjoyable to come before you with uncontrollable praises spilling from our hearts. At each and every sunrise, we will be thanking you for your love and kindness. All day and all night, we will keep proclaiming with love and faithfulness. Melodies of praise will fill the air as every musical instrument joined with every heart overflows with worship. No wonder I'm so glad I can't keep it in. Lord, you thrill me with all you've done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. Those with no discernment can never really discover the deep and glorious secrets hidden in your ways. It's true the wicked flourish, but only for a moment. But you, O oh Lord, are exalted forever in the highest place of endless glory, while all your opponents, the workers of wickedness, will all perish forever separated from you. Your anointing has made me strong and mighty. You've said that those lying in wait to pounce on me would be defeated. And now it's happened right in front of my eyes and I've heard their cries of surrender. Yes, look how you've made the godly flourish like palm trees, each one growing in victory, standing in strength. You've transplanted them into your heavenly courtyard where they are thriving before you, for in your presence, they will remain vital. Even in their old age, they will stay fresh and thrive. Listen to them, with pleasure they still proclaim. You're so good, you are my rock. Your ways are just and fair. Amen. Hello. And firstly, thank you to Deacon Allison, my sister, for asking me to share this reading with you today. It's taken from Mark 8. Jesus asked his followers what people were saying about him. Who do you think I am? He asked. Before the others could speak, Peter said, You're the Messiah, the chosen one, the saviour of the world. Jesus said, well done, Peter. God has revealed that to you. He went on to tell Peter he would be known as the rock and that this truth would be the foundation of the church. Sensing that they'd grasped the truth, Jesus went on to tell them that he must go to Jerusalem where he would be put to death by the religious authorities only for God to raise him to life after three days. Peter was horrified. He pulled Jesus away from the others and he said forcibly, I won't let that happen. Oh, Peter, Jesus said, now I hear the enemy talking, not my father. You're doing the enemy's work if you try to turn me aside from the path my father has shown me. Don't rely on human logic, but see things through God's eyes. That goes for all of you, said Jesus, turning to the others. If you want to follow me, this is the path you need to take. No more selfish ambition. No more living life your own way. You must be ready and willing to give up your life, but it will be more than worth it. So kill off your old life. Hoist your cross on your shoulders each day and follow me. I'm going to my death and you must be ready to suffer too. If you want to find true life, you must be willing to stake everything on me and the truth then you'll have a life which is richer than your wildest dreams. Those who are determined to guard what they have will lose the lot. 
but those who are willing to stake everything on me will hit the jackpot. Don't sell your soul for a good time. Nothing is more valuable than your soul and nothing is worth the risk of losing out on eternal life. Would you seriously spend a lifetime gathering all the world's wealth only to find at the end you've lost the one thing that truly matters? I'm giving you fair warning. If you're too embarrassed to admit you're my follower, why should I recognise you as mine when I return in glory with all God's angels? Some of you will live to see the kingdom burst through. So be ready. Amen. Thanks, Sue, for that reading. It was really nice to see you. I'm just wondering, have you ever been tempted by something that appeared quite attractive or a good buy or an easy option, but in actual fact didn't turn out to be quite what you expected? In all this bad weather we've had recently, I saw an advert on the internet for heated gloves. Excellent, I thought. My fingers are always cold. Even in summer, they sometimes go white. I checked the advert and I couldn't see for the life of me how they actually worked. Eventually, I read the comments underneath and somebody had said, how do they work? Are they mechanical? No, somebody had replied. Somebody else said, do they work by chemical reaction, perhaps? No. So basically, they weren't heated at all, unless your hands were already warm. And I know what you're thinking. It was a bit of a con because they weren't heated gloves. They were just gloves. I want to show you this because sometime before the lockdown, we were wandering along a high street in a certain seaside town when I noticed a poster outside a shop. Free coffee, it said. Marvellous, what's better than free coffee apart from free chocolate? But just as I sort of thought I might go rushing in, I got nearer and nearer and then I saw the sign for what it actually was. It read, free Wi-Fi and lots of coffee. Free Wi-Fi and lots of coffee. Both these things were just intended to deliberately mislead. Otherwise, I suspect they'd probably never have sold any of the gloves. And that was probably very average coffee. And that got me thinking. You can be sure in the reading today that Jesus never ever sold the truth as a false dream to the masses, hoping they'd all get signed up on board before they realised it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Jesus told the truth. He told the truth about who he really is. The truth about the cost of discipleship. Jesus pulled no punches. We join the story today as Jesus' disciples were discovering for themselves the amazing truth that Jesus was the Messiah, the saviour of the world. Some were looking for a hero, someone to save them from the Roman occupation perhaps, someone to change their lives. But the reality wasn't quite what they were expecting or indeed what they wanted to hear. A couple of years ago now, my daughter was getting married and like a lot of women of a certain age I was torn between looking like a typical mother of the bride and trying to appear younger than I really was. I was looking forward to going in all the posh clothes shops and trying on wonderful outfits and dreading it in equal measure. I'm not one for expensive lavish outfits and I had no idea what would suit me. My daughter instantly offered to come and help. Oh my word I thought we like completely different things and different coloured clothes. I could imagine her choosing something that would be beautiful, but perhaps not my style or my colour. So I talked to a friend from church. Straight away, she offered to come with me. She said to me, I'll come. I'll tell you the truth how it is. I'll tell you if it's awful. So I was stuck between my daughter's desire to find me something she liked, which perhaps ran the risk of me looking like somebody else, or my friend's honest, raw, painful, truthful opinion. We're all tempted to take the soft option, aren't we? Who wants to hear the truth? Not many of us. So even though I loved my friend, I went with my daughter. I have to say it turned out really well. We did choose a lovely dress. But even in the reading today, Jesus' friend Peter offered him a soft option. It was a well-meant protective gesture trying to save Jesus from a painful path. 
And let's be honest, most of us would have replied to Peter saying, oh, thanks very much. But it was a plot by the enemy to draw Jesus away from his destiny and ultimately our saving grace. But Jesus saw the trap. He said, don't rely on human logic, but see things through God's eyes. Think about it for a minute. Human logic is always going to protect ourselves. But Jesus knew that wasn't should be what should Jesus knew that wasn't what should happen. Seeing things through God's eyes can be a very different perspective indeed. And tough though it is, Jesus tells the truth. He doesn't sugarcoat what it's like to be a disciple. Nowhere in any of the Gospels does it say, follow me and you'll have a really easy time of it. Everyone will welcome you with open arms. You'll never feel like a religious nut. You'll never be embarrassed. Everyone will be interested in what you have to say. All your friends and family will understand. Church will be great and everyone will always agree with you and there'll be no falling out and you'll never be ill again or suffer stress or grief. And the list could go on and on, couldn't it? It's not designed to put you off, but it's certainly honest. Jesus knew that the truth would turn some people against him. There would be those who fell away. There would be those who didn't understand or those who wanted an easier path. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, this is the path. You must be willing to stake everything on me and on the truth. And then you'll have a life which is richer than your wildest dreams. And that's not an empty promise. Jesus always tells the truth. And that's what Lent is all about, really. That period of time when we take stock and access how we're living in line with Jesus' desire for us. When we look at things through God's eyes. Maybe he asks us to do things which are difficult or make tough choices or put something down or say yes to something and pick something up. God only asks us to do what is in his will for our lives, to increase the kingdom to give us eternal life, to bless others. Is that so hard to do? Maybe we should just start by acknowledging who we are in Christ and who we follow. Jesus said, if you're too embarrassed to admit you're my follower, why should I recognise you as mine? And that's a tough question, tough words indeed. It takes commitment and determination to follow Christ sometimes. I learned that lesson the hard way years and years ago. For some reason, we regularly had a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses who were really friendly and stopped to talk to me and leave magazines. When I was stuck inside with two small babies, I was glad of some religious reading material. But one day I was working away in the kitchen and I heard the door knock and I thought, I just can't face another religious discussion. So I popped my cross, my necklace, inside my jumper like that, so when I got to the front door, they wouldn't see it and we wouldn't be having that conversation about, ah, I can see you're a Christian, but... And as I answered the door, I felt really guilty. I thought, what would God say me hiding my cross like that? To be honest, I felt a bit ashamed. But we stood and we chatted for a few minutes at the door and I thanked them very much for calling and as I turned to come back inside and I shut the front door, I looked down and you wouldn't believe what I was wearing. I'd been in the kitchen making lunch and so I had a full length apron on, one of those that goes around your neck and fastens down the back, and I'd bought it at the church fair. And on it were pictures of herbs and plants from Bible lands with masses of Bible verses printed all over myself. I could almost hear God laughing. I looked like a walking tract. I learned my lesson that day. Be ready, as it said in that reading. You never know the day or the hour. As Jesus said, those who are willing to stake everything on me will hit the jackpot. It might not be an easy path that we're asked to tread, but we can do it together, helping each other along the way. Amen. And so now we're going to sing together. We're going to sing a wonderful hymn that asks us to consider what we've been thinking about. Number 662, and of course the words will come on the screen. 
Have you heard God's voice? Has your heart been stirred? Are you still prepared to follow? Have you made a choice to remain and serve, though the way be rough and narrow? Will you walk the path that will cost you much and embrace the pain and sorrow? Will you trust in one who entrusts to you the disciples of tomorrow? Thank you. service where it's the prayers of concern for others there is a response the words will appear on the screen I'll say you speak what is true and the response in the bold type will be and the truth will set us free let's let's pray to God in faith, knowing that he understands what is best for us. Heavenly Father, increase our faith so that we may be more ready to see through your eyes and move forward wherever you lead us. You speak what is true and the truth will set us free. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us in each home. Bring love where there is none. Bring truth where honesty is lost. Bring compassionship 
where people are lonely and peace where there is anger. You speak what is true and the truth will set us free. Heavenly Father, give to all leaders and their advisors the courage to be honest, the will to be just, and the greatness to be humble and the openness to learn. You speak what is true, and the truth will set us free. Heavenly Father, bring comfort and healing to all who are ill. Peace to those who are anxious and reassurance to the afraid. Teach us, show compassion to those in need from want, poverty or grief. You speak what is true and the truth will set us free. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are dying, for those who are dying alone. May they feel your strong arms surround them as they travel the final journey to be in your presence forever. You speak what is true and the truth will set you free. Heavenly Father, give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy, knowing that your always there beside us in Jesus name. Amen. And now we've come to our final hymn. It's hymn number 239, Sent by the Lord Am I. The words will appear on the screen. Sent by the Lord Am I, my hands are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes. Sent by the Lord Am I, my hands are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change the world of heart and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is mine to do, to set it really free. Oh, help me to obey, help me to do your will. Sent by the Lord Am I, my hands are ready now to make the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent by the Lord am I, my hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of heart and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is mine to do, to set it freely free. Oh, help me to obey, help me to the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent by the Lord am I, my hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change the world of heart and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is mine to do, to set it really free. Oh, help me to obey, help me to do your will. Thank you to everyone who's taken part in this morning's worship and thank you to Jenny Oliver for taking all the parts that we recorded and making them seamless into one piece of worship. It's been lovely to join with you all together in your own homes wherever you are. I'd just like to close with a blessing. Let us pray. Lord with your help we shall not fail you with your presence we shall be strong. With your light we shall conquer the darkness. With your love we shall be free. With your spirit we shall have the power to bring you glory and honour and praise. Amen. Thanks again to Nicola and Susan and Tom. And please take care friends.
I hope to see you all very soon when things ease a little bit. Take care until then. God bless.